Hey guys, Funnyuber here, back with another real-time strategy devlog. This is one of the largest devlogs for this game so far. I will get those units committing war crimes, and once again, improve the building system even more. So let's get into the scuffed Command and Conquer devlog. Your units cannot commit war crimes if they can't even face their target, so that's what I did. It required some editing of the code, but the logic of getting the unit to look at the target was simple. I was just using the look at function. In the future, I'll probably change it to the way I talked about in my smooth enemy aiming video. There's this strange bug where the units look like they have some sass. They like refuse to face their target. I fixed that bug by not updating the target position variable every frame. So now we actually have the units facing the targets. We are the majority of the way there. So let's get these things shooting projectiles. Before I get the units doing this, let me explain the concept of projectiles versus raycasts. Projectiles are physically simulated in the game world, so it takes time to reach its target. Raycasts use math and are practically instant. I decide to use projectiles. There is one problem though. Rigid bodies only check for collision in the physics process. This means if a collision happens between physics updates, then that means the collision practically didn't happen. So how would I fix this? Well, attaching a raycast to the bullet. Raycast check for a collision every frame, so problem solved. Ballistics are now in my game. Now how would a unit spawn bullets? Well, I store a reference to the pack scene, and if the unit is in the attacking state, then every 0.5 seconds a bullet is spawned. Right now, the bullet is kind of just summoning in at position 0 relative to the world. So when the bullet is spawned, we set position and rotation to the position and rotation of the bullet spawn position attached to the friendly. Now how would I get the bullet moving in the direction of rotation? Well, Matt, we get the global transform and then the global rotation using the basis. Then I want an axis. Since Z is forward, that means I would use that axis. I normalize it so the length of the vector is 1. Then I multiply it by the bullet force. The unit code sets that and at the time of writing the script, it is set to 15. So bullets are moving forward nice and deep. Now, let's get these things doing damage to structures. This is pretty simple. The building has a health variable and a faction variable. The bullet also has a faction variable. When an object collides with either the bullet or the bullet raycast, the group of the object is gone. If the collider is in the group of buildings or units, then it checks the faction of the collider. If it is not the same faction of the bullet, then it does damage damage to the structure just by subtracting the health variable. War crimes can now be committed. I had a few bugs with the bullets, they are actually pretty funny, so cue the clip. And after the bug clips, enjoy some clips of the bullets actually working. So right now the building system is kinda boring, you can only place them in one rotation and it's kinda hard to build grid snap bases, so I added building rotation and grid snapping. Don't worry though, grid snapping is optional by holding down the control, so how did I rotate buildings? I might be wrong at this, but I'll explain. Well, I first had to understand the difference between Euler angles and quaternions. At first I was saying the rotation using the rotation variable, but that is in quaternion. Once again, I might be wrong about this. So it would result in weird values, then I switched it to 2 degrees and then it worked. Right now the code exists for rotation rotating buildings, but no rotation actually takes place. So whenever the user presses no mouse button, the building is rotated 45 degrees. Input is checked for in the process function. This is good for geometric bases, but let's make something a little less restrictive. In the underscore input function that comes with Godot, we get the input event, and if it is mouse then we check if it is scroll wheel. And if the user is scrolling up, then we increase the rotation by 15 degrees, and do the opposite if we are scrolling down. There is now rotation, but I mentioned I would also add grid snapping. This requires a small amount of math, but it is simple enough for a fourth grader to understand. The way it works is by getting the global mouse position, then dividing that by the increment amount, rounding that, then multiplying it by the increment amount. And if I run the game and hold control, you can see the building snap. Nice. That is pretty much everything I've done for the building system, so here's some clips of the new building system. <laughs> You would 
not want the enemy to build buildings in your base, and I'm sure the enemy does not want you to build your buildings in their base, so I decided to add territory to fix that. The territory system is really simple and works really similarly to the building collision checks talked about last devlog. The summarized version is that every building that expands territory throws an array of all friendly blueprints in its territory. Every frame it sets a boolean on the blueprint that tells the blueprint that it is in friendly territory. When the building exits the territory, it is removed from that building blueprint array and its territory boolean is set to false. Here are some clips of me building in my own territory. How do I plan on distributing this game? Well, there are multiple options. I will list some of them. Steam is expensive to set up a page and does not guarantee visibility, but it is more likely. GitHub is mostly a code sharing platform and has almost no discoverability features other than search. Not good for visibility, but it is free to set up and allows you to host websites. Game Jewel, I have never used it or hear about anybody using it, so I don't know enough about it. HIO is one of the best options. It is free to set up a page and allows fairly large file sizes. HIO also has fairly good discoverability and a way to optimize your games from search, so I decided to go with HIO. Currently, the page is private, but in the very near future, it is likely that an alpha or beta version will be going up. So be sure to subscribe and smash the bell to get notified for that announcement video. I'll probably also create a GitHub website and a Game Jolt page just for that extra surface area. That will be it for Devlog 4. If you like, then leave a like on this video. If not, then let me know why in the comments down below. While you're down there, make sure to subscribe. That is it. Thunderbird out.